What's up here guys? Um, playing with the ringer circuit again. Trying to really master it. Uh, everything is contained on this board. I'm trying to really master it. Um, a lot of people asking me certain questions about how it's wound. It is a type 77 met glass laced ferrite rod. You can kind of see the met glass sparkling in it a little bit when light catches it the right way. The primary coil here is 14 AWG, highest quality magnet wire you can get. The thin coil, the secondary, which you would wind first, is uh, 26 AWG, highest quality magnet wire you can get. They're wound in opposite directions to make a bucking configuration. So the AC output of the ringer goes to a full bridge rectifier composed of 1N5822 diodes. We use that power to charge up a huge capacitor bank to about 90 volts DC and that capacitor bank can run a 30 watt load hyper efficiently and it's almost in a state of um, react reactive power where when I turn this on it'll run 30 watts at 30 watts and be as efficient as possible with still small amounts of wireless power to play with also in this circuit I captured small amounts of back EMF rectified it to DC and sent it back to my input to reduce my power draw saves about anywhere from half a watt to one watt when you turn the power up so I'm playing with increasing the voltage output on the ringer from 12 volts to 20 volts so all this board does is step up our 14 volts DC to 20 volts DC and it gives us much more power so I'll turn that on and show you it'll turn on and it'll whine for a bit our large capacitor bank will charge while we run a bulb to a full 30 watt intensity still accumulating a charge so this capacitor bank is acting as a buffer storing all that radiant energy from the ringer and that bulb is probably 30 watts based on the heat output maybe a little more here's our input here's our output and that bulb to me looks like it's slightly higher output wattage than what we're using um, also take into account I still didn't on this circuit add wireless, special wireless receivers that can also harness this power and um, send that to the capacitor bank as well so you would just simply add a rectifier here in a special configuration and have that go into the capacitor bank as well and uh, that's how it looks in fact I'm even going to try and lean this up a little so you can see what it says 28.20 watts I'll unscrew the bulb and we will very quickly drain our power to maintain that capacitor charge drop the 5 watt input and disconnecting the back EMF coils will increase our power draw As you see, we're a little more efficient with the back EMF capture. And uh, there's the voltage that's accumulated in that capacitor bank. You don't want to touch that. That would blow your finger off. And again, here's when we run the load. Capacitor bank drains a little. Bulb runs. To reach a state where it's volts amperes reactive and it's as efficient as possible so to impedance match this you want a 35 to 40 watt load anywhere between 30 and 40 watts is ideal and again great little handy detector tool 
still have small amounts of radiant energy to play with in this circuit. Um, and this is a wireless coil here, not even connected in any way. And it can do that. Um, yeah, here's the intensity of the bulb. Good amount of heat coming off of that. Hurts the touch. Um, this output might even be slightly over that input. I'm not sure. I can't measure it. Every time I try and measure it, it detunes. Or when I set up a converter to step it down from 100 volt DC to 14, somehow the converter has a very small draw that detunes it or messes with it in some way. Uh, but again, the correct way to use this power, step it down to 14 volts DC, run it through a pulse circuit that would pulse discharge 40 watts into a battery or super cap that would then run an inverter. So, figured I'd make that update video. What the ringer can do. And right now you really don't want to go above a 20 watt input for this experiment. That's just how efficient it is. Um, after I shut it off, it will run itself for a bit from the big capacitor bank. So it's off and the capacitor bank is still running the bulb for a bit. It has a very powerful resonance that builds up in it. Turn it on. You hear the ringing. The key is negative resistance. I believe we hit volt amperes reactive again. Back up a bit, let you see. Unscrew the bulb. Dropped almost no power input, very low. It's like five or six watts. Yeah. That's the charge on our super cap, 13.1 volts. Also, another weird thing I noticed too is that thing will say it's consuming like 20 or 30 watts but sometimes the charge doesn't really drop for what you think it's using and then there we go i'm gonna see underneath it that's how it looks not really much to the circuit an experiment with wrapping a resonant wire around the ringer and seeing if I can harvest some more power that way without affecting it. So, 40 watt bulb, burning probably at 30 watts. Feels like it's a little over 30 watts. Again, that's our input. And it's interesting to note, when you get the correctly sized capacitor bank, the circuit doesn't ring. The only reason it rings is when the core reaches saturation through too much magnetic resonance. But, uh, yeah, that's that. That concludes the video. Uh, you want to buy your ringer circuit, 150 bucks. Feel free to contact mtechindustries2022 at gmail.com to order. You can use this thing to run light bulbs, charge capacitors, do experiments, charge batteries, um, basically whatever you want. And you can also buy it from the Patreon. There's a Patreon tier to buy it as well. It would be under the membership tier. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive on the membership tier to account for the fees and the losses. Uh, the, the best way to buy it is through email, but you can buy it through the Patreon. So yeah, thank you everybody and feel free to like comment subscribe and keep watching and stay tuned it only keeps getting better